Hello, folks. Time for our last video for this chapter. So, angiosperms. So, the ones that we like. All right, go away. Angiosperms. <laughs> they produce flowers, nuts, fruit basically all the stuff that we really like. They also are responsible for most of the plant diversity on Earth. So your flower parts, you have your stamen, which is composed of an anther and a filament. So male, anytime you see that anther, male. Fe the female part, is the carpal most of a stigma, a style, and an ovary. So ovary, you should know as a female. I should surely hope. Okay, anyways, when we're looking at our flower, all the little tiny fuzzy bits on long stalks surrounding the central part, those are the uh, stamens, the male parts. And the thing in the middle is your female part, your carpal. At the top is the stigma, the stalk that it's on is the style, and the ovary is at the base. So if you think of a rose, you have the petals, you have the little yellow things on stalks, those are the anthers. And in the very center, you sometimes see a little triangular bit that looks kind of moist. So that is your stigma, which goes down a very short style in the instance of roses your ovary. So those are your flower parts. We have a flower bud in cross section, which is why, which also you may notice something isn't right. I'm going a little bit fast here, so it's okay. Um, something's not right with this line drawing here, and it's the number of flower parts. So you might remember dicots have flower parts in numbers of four or five, and monocots have flower parts in numbers of, in multiples of three. How many petals do we have here? One, two, three. How many anthers do we have here? One, two, three, four, five. Which is why this drawing is totally wrong, which is also why when we look at our flower bud cross section, you'll notice that it has the correct number of anthers. Because, you know, nature knows what it's doing better than that artist. Anyways. Um, <laughs> and remember, these little structures with four lobes, that is your anther. The petals are out here. Sepals are the ones that surround them. So the green parts on your flower petal, those are sepals. On your flower bud, those are the sepals. And in the center, you have your ovary. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. There we go. What a pretty picture. So on the outside, we have our sepals. You can see them looking a little bit more rugged and puffy than our petals on the inside. And then you can see our anthers here, each of those producing your pollen. And this is your ovary in the middle. So. This is a flower bud growing up like this, sliced as if you're shaving off razor thin sections from top to bottom. Okay. And that's exactly how they did this. They set it in a block of wax and they shaved off layer by layer from the top to the bottom until they got in the middle of this flower bud. Now, it also has on the same slide 
an image of one that's a little bit more mature. And I cannot zoom out any further than that. There in the center is your ovary. That might actually be the style right there. So they might have cut it a little bit too high up in that one. So you see how empty and hollow that is. And you can see your anthers are opening up to re release those male reproductive structures. So they will be exiting in between those two little rattlesnake tail looking things. And again, these on the outside, these are the anthers on the inside. That'll make more sense to my brain. On the inside is your ovary. All right. Here's the other one. Ovary, anthers, petals, sepals. And we know that this is a monocot because it has anthers in multiples of three. Okay, go. Let's go back to our PowerPoint. So the filament is this structure back here. Balls are the microsporangia, and they are full of microspores. They grow into male, the male gametophyte called pollen, which you're probably kind of familiar with. So the ovary and cross section in the very center, you might remember it was kind of tri triangular, again, probably because it, it was a monocot. In the center, you'll have megaspores. The entire structure is the ovule. On the inside, connecting that ovule to the center is the funiculus, which we're going to talk about a little bit more later. That entire female reproductive structure in the center is called the carpal. So fertilization under happens. We've got a zygote, which undergoes some mitosis to form an embryo, some more mitosis form a seed, which of course undergoes a whole lot more mitosis to produce a mature plant with flowers trying to make its own babies. And so with its uh, reproductive structures, it is going to release uh, microspores from the anthers and which are going to undergo meiosis to produce sperm going to travel down the stigma and style into the ovary where the ovule has produced uh, megaspores, typically four and then three abort, which later become food for this egg. So it undergoes some mitosis, forms the egg, and that ovule so your pollen's up here, produces pollen tube, carries the sperm down to the egg, fertilizes it, and your cycle begins new. So like gymnosperms, angiosperms, pollen grains contain gener a generative cell and a tube cell. Tube cell will grow the pollen tube, pardon me, once a pollen grain has been deposited on the stigma of a flower. The generative cell will then divide to form two sperm cells, which will travel down the pollen tube to the ovule, fertilizing it. Ovules contain the cells which divide by meiosis to produce the haploid megaspores, only one of which is the egg. The egg is fertilized, produces the zygote. The other sperm fertilizes the surrounding egg, which becomes the endosperm, which is called double fertilization, and it is unique to angiosperms. 
The zygote will develop into an embryo and the ovule will develop into a seed along with endosperm. The embryo is food supply and a lot of times our food supply because that's where we get fruits and seeds. So our ovary and the receptacle form the fruit. The ovary wall forms the pericarp. And some fruits, we like the pericarp best. The purpose of the fruit is, protect, is to protect the seeds and aid in their dispersal. So if you wanna get your children out of the house and far, far away from you, that way you aren't competing with them in your old age and their youth, Grab them in some sugar and feed them to a stranger and let that stranger carry them off into the woods and defecate them out into the, uh, somewhere far, far away from you, you know, where they're not your problem anymore. And that's exactly how a lot of plants do it. Um, so mature fruits, fruits can be fleshy or dry. So fleshy fruits, think tomatoes, apples, oranges, all that good juicy stuff. Dry, think peanuts, beans, grains, acorns. Seeds can seed gain nutrients from the stalk like funiculus. So think pumpkin seeds and all that stringy crap that you is really gross to touch when you're scraping out your pumpkin. Happy Halloween, you guys. Think of that next when you're doing that. All those little fibers are funiculi is probably the plural for that. Anyways, the endosperm is where it stores starch. So remember, think about all these different places where your plant is storing starch. So that all these places are the same places that you like to eat. This is not a coincidence. This is why America loves taters and corn. That's because they're the least healthy vegetables out there because that's where these plants are concentrating food compounds. So starches, carbohydrates, that sort of business. That's why lettuce and uh, celery, all those parts where the plant is not stocking up starch, it tastes terrible. Anyways, the embryo is composed of an embryonic root, embryonic leaves and cotyledons, not true leaves. In a monocot, there will be one cotyledon. In a eudicot, there will be two cotyledons. So think bean sprouts. For monocots, think grasses. So all of the typical grasses that you see around your house and in fields and everywhere, they're all monocots. So they have one cotyledon, parallel venation. They don't get woody. They, yeah, that sort of business. Bamboo kind of is a little bit weird but you know that's that's your extreme case of a monocot. Eudicots think all of your trees, all of your shrubs, all of your normal uh, non-grassy plants basically. It's woody, it's a eudicot. So corn, that is our example monocot. Beans, that is our eudicot. Corn, just great big grass. Okie doke. Well, that's that. That is all. So I will see you all next time. Maybe, maybe not. Anyways, bid you all adieu and good luck on that practical. Make sure you're familiar with um, all those slides that I just showed you. Make sure if you see one, know what type of plant it is, know what structures uh, are in them. And when I'm talking about that, go back to those images in the PowerPoint where we have these things labeled. If we have it labeled on an image of a, micros of a, a microscopic picture, know that feature. Know what it belongs to, know whether it's male or female. Know whether it's diploid or haploid. If you know these things, you will do great on the practical. Okay, good luck and adios.